dear viewer good morning i would like to share my research is any skill in research basically i do research on solar photovoltaics during my phd in japan i did the fundamental research on the solar, solar photovoltaic or optoelectronics materials that actually explored in the device applications and modeling for solar photovoltaic systems as material design so here you can see that the uh, knowledge promotion and expertise that we published already in web of science journal based on the previous work and research experience i actually involved in the advanced uh, and higher band gap materials gallium nitride the deposition on the most familiar silicon materials for the advanced power electronics or optical electronic device design in that process, the MOCVD system was introduced to develop the interlayer between silicon and gallium nitride, and eventually, the gallium nitride was developed by using uh, gallium <coughs> arsenide interface and silicon carbide interface. But the gallium arsenide interface eventually transferred to porous gallium nitride, as you can see here. And that uh, photoluminescence, you can see very sharp peak for the better quality of gallium nitride deposited on silicon. And eventually the stress of this device as, uh, or the material system that favorable for optoelectronic devices has varied due to the growth conditions and thickness as well. The porosity actually made it uh, thermally less effective on the EP layer that eventually reduced the stress and develop the gallium nitride about two micrometers thickness without cracks. Later on in the modeling system of gallium uh, silicon solar photovoltaic using the traditional silicon oxide and silicon nitride interface that can be accumulated as a passivation action. And you can see different type of responsivity you can realize from the different uh, uh, interlayers uh, deposition at the interface uh, silicon dioxide and then different uh, doping concentration had made different uh, level of responsivity and eventually the two types of mostly important in industry that uh, n type and p type uh, materials uh, for silicon photovoltaic applications here you can see the responsivity variation for the blue and red color for the silicon of N type and P types, it varies definitely. And later on the proceedings with the PhD works that uh, development and designs of the uh, multi-junction uh, solar cell using silicon and indium gallium nitride that can be more favorable to cover the whole solar spectrum and eventually you can see the uh, responsibility of this different layers that deposition by different interlayer like silicon dioxide, aluminum nitride and silicon nitride and without layer. It has different, the aluminum nitride and silicon dioxide definitely has greater uh, impact. And you can see the current uh, variation, current density variation with the thickness of the layers. Later on, he did hit the uh, modeling with the indium gallium nitride and the traditional interlayer that use on silicon for heterojunction. How they make or mark variation of the current density in terms of the combination of open circuit voltage due to the tandem solar photovoltaics. Here you can see different indium composition has marked different pen gaps and eventually it can get different current density and open circuit voltage. You can see here that the silicon itself has a lower deep velocity, but whenever it is gallium nitride or indium gallium nitride, definitely it has greater deep velocity. So eventually for silicon, uh, lower open circuit voltage at higher current density, how to optimize as a series contact with uh, indium gallium nitride higher open circuit voltage with higher current density. That should be achieved by this higher deep velocity of this advanced semiconductor materials. And then the other papers that re represent that how the in 
organic materials has less performance in con comparison to inorganics. In that case, how the carrier selective interlayer is effective to develop the carrier conduction or contact at the electrode end. So here you can see the diversity of this um, permittivity of organic and inorganic materials. The effective energy transformation phenomena is different. Though their band gap is higher or absorption age is higher, but it eventually lower performance. Here in the uh, representation of the fan super IC, actually it is NREL US data that can see that higher band gap multi-junction materials has a greater uh, performance or efficiency uh, later on the sil silicon uh, single crystalline silicon advancement then the multi-crystalline silicon cadmium telluride and eventually it goes low towards the organic materials so why the organic materials is very low compared to the advanced inorganic materials or even silicones that you can see here the silicone the current density is actually higher that eventually get greater power density eventually the differences of silicon multi silicon is the crystalline properties then cadmium telluride the thin film also achieve better but in case of albuskite it is now rising area of the solar photovoltaic materials it also getting very high power density but organic still has low power because due to the energy gap between the effective accumulation of electrical transformation energy from optical here you can see though the absorption is greater but the effective operational energy is lower that's why the organic is remain at the uh, higher end with the less operational uh, to effective energy differences at the highest means it's less effective although their absorption is scattered but the most effective materials is here that lower absorption even the differences between the energy activation and operation is less so here you can see why organic is privileged because here the both the photovoltaic parameter like open side voltage and field factors are eventually greater that can accumulatively get higher efficiencies even the current density if you think that the highest in the silicon then followed by this and different materials and eventually lower at the the organic materials or the interface materials what actually the determined factor for industry application or uh, adaptation of materials the two factor is very important that one is the energy payback time that how is uh, get return the investment another the, depending on that its uh, market penetration is promoted so here you can see that the crystalline silicon multi crystallines amorphous cadmium telluride and cigs this industry is actually the uh, thin film type it's actually low market penetration and eventually the higher is the silicon based materials because you, if you compare crystalline and multi crystalline the multi crystalline definitely the energy payback time is less that's why it is most supportive in the industry and on the other hand among the um, thin film technologies the cadmium telluride has the highest uh, impact in the industry that's why they are both multi crystalline silicon and cadmium telluride are developing very fast then the core region for carrier selective contact or preservation issue for the silicon technologies actually you can see the references as we use the uh, amorphous silicon hydrogenated interface that is the references when you consider the silicon dioxide as a preservation material then aluminum oxide silicon nitride these three actually silicon dioxide silicon nitride and aluminum oxide are the three crucial parameters now now moving the research toward the silicon technology this direction why because these two actually electronegativity and electropositivity you can see that it equally managed so using those layers we can manage the neutrality like the amorphous silicon hydrogen based material and eventually that higher band gap of those materials can have the highest uh, absorption to the observer and its uh, carrier conductivity also enhanced by some extent due to the uh, trade off between the field preservation to chemical preservation effect so these two 
base material for passivation is now amorphous silicon with hydrogen phase and silicon dioxide. They are most common is now in the ACIT cell. Then eventually they introduce the silicon nitride and aluminum oxide. It eventually it get more promoted uh, uh, diversify in the passivation and eventually improvement the industry development of silicon solar cells. The scarier selectivity purpose, even the not only silicon based materials, even the organic or parboscite also using the carrier selective layer to overcome the barrier of the carrier dynamics at the interface. So in that case, and the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide actually mostly for the end type adaptation or carrier conductivity it supports and the can see here the energy level for the tin oxide is very familiar for whole selective contact that can eventually make the carrier selectivity for electron selectivity those interface materials and for the whole selectivity this tin oxide is preferable then the other band gap is very different from this uh, n or p or whole selectivity issues the materials that other core thing need to discuss inside this um, technology of the advancement for solar photovoltaic. That is their band gap, their electrical permittivity because the binding energy actually the core issue that relevant to the electrical permittivity. Those has higher electrical permittivity must lowering the binding energy that support to uh, minimize the energy to leverage the electrons or hold from the system. That's why we prefer the high electrical permittivity, higher band gap material as emitter interface of contact. Even the back end contact also, you know, the infrared range uh, absorption is predominant heat. That's why not only the electrical conductivity issue at the top and bottom, thermal conductivity also need to be considered to develop and design the interlayer for the activation or better of to electric energy transformation process. So the key difference between the organic and inorganic, you can see that the inorganic actually very sensitive to the temperature effect. It, it makes efficiency very sensitive to the temperature while inorganic is less sensitive because inorganic band gap in this region. And definitely this uh, sensitivity issue can utilize in the advancement of design. How it is actually, if we made the inorganic uh, as a absorber material, base material, and then organic as a emitter material that has higher band gap. And due to higher binding energy of lower permittivity, it can be adjusted the interface that uh, minimize the leakage effect, that significant direction of research towards the organic inorganic hybrid heterojunctions. We are also conducting this area. And it publication, the latest in the Springer, you can see that the how the minimize the leakage current about 10 to the power minus 5 ampere per centimeter square to 10 to the power 4 is the minimum and lowest level for that particular temperature range while for the organic inorganic materials it is very high because the temp temperature sensitivity of the orga inorganic material is greatest compared to the organic materials in that case it is very useful to utilize this organic materials as emitter for the inorganic materials to develop advancement of the solar cell, even in the low processing cost. In that case, you can see that the rectifying ratio also promoted at a higher field. That means it breakdown is very high due to higher band gap. And eventually it can be utilized for detection purpose also. It's very sensitive with the higher field to get uh, increase the rectifying ratio. So, <laughs> The overall prediction of this research is actually the moving of research towards the advanced interlayer supportive photothermal stability development. That is actually those interface or interlayer that consider not only the permittivity, band gap, and electrical conductivity, that also consider the thermal conductivity, how they mess with the electrical and thermal to adjust in the optical interface. This aspect, hybrid heterojunction, is most significant. Thank you for your attention. Thanks.